Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode we are going to automate the production of obsidian and we're going to use the smeltery for doing that and we're going to use a little bit of immersive engineering for pumping things around and we're going to use automated redstone to do the logic. So let's start and have a look at first of all the Tinker's Construct bit. Now Tinker's Construct if you put a bucket of lava and a bucket of water into the smeltery, it will automatically uh, make obsidian, or it can do in this in this mud pack anyway. So I put a bucket of lava in there and right click that, that should go out, and then as soon as that's emptied out of there, I'll put a bucket of water in it. It's actually quite slow this, I'm not sure where the slowness is, I think it's probably the, um, the faucet that makes it slow. So if we have a look at this now, we are actually starting to make obsidian. And as soon as the, it goes fairly quickly once the, the materials are there. So we can then turn right click this here and it produces a block of obsidian. And that will fill up there and when it's when it's sort of set, if that's the right word, it'll get taken out of there and get put into here. So we should see another block of obsidian come into here. So that's how I've been making my obsidian. But that's a little bit of a pain. So what I would like to do is to automate that process today. So let's have a look at this. Um, it's night time, so I'll have a quick sleep and I'll see you in a few seconds. Right. This is where I'm going to do the demonstration today. This is a, the base of a smeltery here, so we'll, we'll put it in. And what we're going to use is we're going to feed these with um, fluid. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the... Um, I haven't got it with me here. Well, I have actually. It's everything we need in here. So what we can use are these fluid valves from uh, automated redstone. Now these do not work very well with um, immersive engineering. So I'll show, I'll demonstrate that for you. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I would like to have a pump and a lever. In fact, I'll take all of those levers with us. We'll see how it gets on. So what I need to demonstrate is why this isn't working. So if we put down a tank here and a tank here like this. Before I do that, I'm going to put down a pump. Didn't pick one. Oh, so it didn't. Yep. And we're just going to configure this pump so that we can feed it in one side and out of the other side. And I didn't pick up my hammer. Like this. So if I shift right click this side, it'll affect the other side. So we want the other side to be an input. Oh, yes, an input. And this side will make an output. So right click that twice. And then we can put down a tank another tank like this we put a lever onto this now like that um, and turn it on and then as we put a bucket of water in here I've got a, I've got a, an infinite water supply just here so we'll just use this one of these infinite water supplies and we'll just put it to a bucket in here as you see that that bucket gets pulled all the way across straight away into this which is fine and I was going okay that's great so let's then I wanted to reduce the flow of this so I was using the energy valve uh, the fluid valve for doing that so what I thought I could just do is to put this down uh, like this let's just put the fluid down first so that's pointing the direction you wanted to go to very much like um, a piston or whatever else is the mechanism for putting those down oops I must drop that one didn't mean to drop that so let's put that bucket of water back in here again and nothing happens and I was going oh so then I tried to do it with different techniques I was using um, tubes and whatever else or pipes let's just have a look at a pipe let's put this tank back here now and get a pipe out of the the chest I've got some pipes in here from immersive engineering somewhere here I've got them on me actually let's just put one of these pipes down like this and that pipe connects to this but doesn't connect here in fact it doesn't work at all with the most of engineering as far as I can see it'll work I think it might work with the drum with the barrels no it won't with the barrels because you can't do the barrels so easily it's got to use you've got to use a pipe so I'm getting a little bit frustrated as you can imagine it's a bit awkward when things don't work as you hope they're going to work but I did figure it out let's just remove this pump like that and this time we're going to put down the um, fluid valve like this 
and that's going the right way as you can see and then we're going to put down the other tank and just like um, immersive engineering you have to put a lever on this thing when you want to control it at the moment it's set to being a fluid valve and it's got a flow rate going through here so I want to increase this fluid flow rate so let's say 0.2 like this and then put a valve uh, put a lever on it and then turn it on and you'll see that the fluid starts to go through here and it should be doesn't take that long for a bucket but it's going into a slowish rate and I think ah, oh, that's a good way we can do this and use this as a mechanism for um, pumping water across into the into the smell tracer and lava at the same time so they're not going too fast so the, the smell tracer is not getting full of one of the two liquids that's the design goal so the next problem was how do I know when a tank is full or empty well actually it's fortunate that the comparators do work so you can put a comparator down here and a comparator down here and then you can put down some redstone which we'll go and get out of that chest because I haven't got that with me. I uh, can't afford too much to carry too much around, otherwise my inventory gets completely full. I put that down here and this down here. And this now has a power, as you can see from the one probe window. This has got no power. So this has got a power of three. So each bucket of water that we put into here will increase its power. So let's just take some, I think this is, yeah, this is an infinite water supply too. So as you get up here now that's 11 and the next one will make take it up to 15 which is max power so i'm going oh great good so what we can do now is we can have these two inputs here and what we're going to do with that is we want to make an and gate now an and gate in minecraft is actually awkward because it, an and gate you have to reverse all the logic so we need some redstone torches and we need some blocks i'm going to use what those blocks and i'm going to use some um repeaters just for the sake of demonstration I think I've got some redstone lamps here but I don't need those but I do need some redstone we'll make sure we've got plenty of redstone with us as well so now how to do this is basically you put down a block like this here and on the other side here like this and then what you want to do at the other side of this is we would like to put some redstone torches because we have to reverse the logic so we put down a redstone torch in each of these two and the one that's got power on it, this one here, will turn off the redstone torch. Now what we then do is we take some redstone, like this, and we just put some block of redstone down here and here, dust down here and down here. And then we've put another block in the middle of those two. And then we need a redstone torch on that. And that'll actually make whatever input is there is to be output. So I need I should sorry. I do need some redstone on top of this as well like that so that then goes off because one of those two inputs is on so let's just then run that down here like this I can do the same on the other side uh, which is actually easier for us to see so I can put that down there and then put um, I have to be careful here I think maybe I can just put down some redstone yeah I'll put some redstone down like that so whenever, when this has now got some water in it, so let's put some water into this tank here. Like that. This one goes on and that one comes on because both this one and this one have got redstone. If I remove some of this water from here like this. What happened to that? <laughs> oh, I think I've got not exact amount of water in here for some reason or other. Oh, of course I haven't because I'm pumping it through here. Let's just do. Let's just. Uh, yeah, I've got to pump. Sorry, I've got to do it this way. <laughs> I'd forgotten I was pumping this through. So you get four buckets of these, and then we can pump that through like that. And then we should be able to. This is going to be slow, isn't it? Let's just make this minimum size like that. 0.5. It's going to go through as fast as possible with this valve. In this mode i can actually change the mode i can change this to being measure flow and then that does it does it straight away um i'm not sure i can take it as yes, i can good so i can take a bucket out of here like this right now no no output no neither both of these are empty therefore this is off 
put one in that is still off. Get a second bucket here and put it in here. Ah, oh, yes, I've still got that on. Let's do it like this. I'm going to have to remove this. I'm going to have to remove this on. So let's just remove the let's remove the valve because it's, it's messing my demonstration up. Not that it matters that much. So try again. So now we can put a water in here, and this time it's on. So as soon as you remove that, it's off. If I remove all of this water out of here, that will also go off, as you can see. So the idea is I've got one lava and one water, and we're going to use the, the valves to control the flow. So the next thing to do is to build a smelter in. And there's something new in um, Pollutions of the Rain. Well, actually, adv advanced chimneys. Because what we can now do is we can actually push pollution down. And the way you do that is we put this, I want the, smear, the smeltery controller here. So what I'm going to do is put a, a pump down here like this, lower. And normally you'd put this, um, before you'd have the controller directly on top of it. You don't need to anymore. You can use a chimney. So here's a third chimney like this. And then we can put the controller on top of that chimney. this and then we can have some seared um, well, I'm actually using I'm seared brick vents I'm actually using seared bricks and making vents out of those so I can make a vent here and I can also put a vent here and like that and then we can put some chimneys they're not going to smoke yet because we haven't got any um, the smelter is not completed but we've got the, the controller down so now we're going to just complete this so what I need to do next is I'm going to put down three drains one drain is going to be for the output which is going to come here and the other two drains are going to be the inputs which are here and here so one of these I'm going to put lava in and the other I'm going to put actually going to do this one water and this one lava so all we need to do now is to finish off this so I put down a tank in the middle it can be an empty tank and it will remain an empty tank and then we just put seared bricks around the sides here like this and it's going dark again so I'm going to have to uh, a quick sleep and as soon as you see that <clears throat> it's starting to smoke which means that the, the which means that the pollution is going to go through those roots and out so I'll have a quick sleep and come back in a second right so let's let's start by putting getting these um, these any these fluid valves down now there are tricks with the fluid valves if you press shift when you're putting fluid down, valve down, it'll point in the opposite direction that you expect. So that was shifting down and it points up. If I come over here and do it on this side here, it's going to point out to me. So let's press shift and it, yeah, you see they're coming that direction. Now if I remove this, let's remove those two, didn't mean to put two down anyway. <laughs> and just put it on the, just right click the face of this, it's going to go the direction I want them to go in. So like that. Pretty much, well actually, I'm not quite sure what that's like, to be honest with you, but it, it simplifies putting these down. So we're going to have these here, and then we're going to have a tank. So we're going to use one tank of wa for water, as the, on this side, as you can see, because I've got the water over here, and one for lava. And then I'm going to basically use those comparators that we've got out of here. Let's get the comparators on the hand. That's the relays, comparators here and here and I'm not going to use that complicated logic for doing this I'm going to use redstone automation now redstone automation is actually very straightforward I've got a circuit set up here and we'll put this one down like that and then for that I'm also going to need some cables and we're going to need a redstone receiver wire two of those for each side some solid cables and one redstone emitter and what we're going to do is we're going to say if this tank and this tank have got water uh, have got what fluid in then we're going to output a, an emitter signal into this these two devices here so let's do that so we put down an emitter here like this and you'll see it connects to four sides we don't need it connecting to four sides it's connecting to each of the two valves plus the um plus the said bricks which we can shift right click these off and also into the ground we don't need that either there's no reason to have those there and then we're going to connect this up here so we're just going to use some solid redstone wire from here 
into that and that's going to allow this to connect into these two so with, when this is getting an output it's going to connect these two and they're going to flow at the same time now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the speed the time of these ones so increase the time I mean to 0.25 seconds I think is a sensible starting point I'm not 100% sure we'll find out and in these here I thought well you could put down redstone in fact it doesn't work it looks like it's working but it doesn't get a signal I'll show you what I'm talking about let's turn this on so it's now running and you'll see there's no signal in here if I remove this one uh, well, I need to give it some water of course that would help wouldn't it let's give it a bucket of water in here now it's on you'll see it still doesn't work but you have so therefore you have to use the receiving cables like this and you just put those down one there and one there and you'll see this is connected in fact I have set this up already so on the north side we've got input A on the south side we've got input B as you can see and the output is facing towards me and I've got there so at the moment it's got no fluid in here so there's no signal coming out let's just remove this for the time being because I don't want to I want things to run at the same time so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put into here some water so we need a source of water and the easiest way to do that is a fluid prompt from immersive engineering now these things actually let's have a look at it let's put it on the top of this here like this it has an input from the bottom by default and the outputs are nowhere so it doesn't have any outputs so we want to input water from here and output it to this tank here so we can put this down here like that and then we can shift right click this with the hammer twice and it'll go to output in fact it tells you so the opposite side is now an input and now it's an output so if we come along here we should see an orange dot here which means it's outputting water now the next thing we're going to do is we need to wire this up so we need some connect cables and some for this and we need some a repeater later on so we've got two LV wire connectors here um, and some insulated wire so I'm going to connect this one up first of all and we're going to connect it across to this one over here because this is high enough and I don't think this is going to get affected by snow the snow's been a it's been a right pain to be honest with you it's knocking off all cables and all sorts of things if you don't think about it and I wasn't so that's ready but it's not pumping it's not pumping because it's not got a lever on it it needs a redstone signal so we can put a lever on this like this and turn it on that'll then fill up this tank okay fine and that tank will always be full so let's just turn this off again so it doesn't pump any more we know we got four buckets of water in here so on the other side we're going to do the same thing this time we're going to use um, some B products to actually get this to work we're going to use phosphor phosphor and sand if you look at the uses of this in a squeezer makes lava I think I've covered that before and the phosphor is coming from simmering comb if you look at the uses of the simmering comb in the centrifuge it produces refractory wax which is basically fireproof stuff and some phosphor so you get a 70 per chance, chance of two so you get a lot of output from this simmering comb the comb comes from three different types of beast in this fiendish and demonic and as you can see I'm running uh, in the nether at the moment uh, fiendish beast because they basically kill any zombie pig one around <laughs> me too if I get too close to them um, it did, this one will actually set you on fire but it doesn't affect the zombie pigments and that's and I've got enough glowstone but I wanted some ash for other purposes so that's how we get those two products so we need a squeezer and we need a pump and we're going to put a post down and a relay and you'll see why so what I want to do is I want to put on here a pump so let's do that first of all because we're going to put the squeezer on the other side of the pump just the stuff that I've been doing before so shift right click this twice and once here so that's the input and the outputs coming out here and on the input we're going to put the squeezer like that and then the squeezer needs power now what I'm going to do with the squeezer is I'm going to put uh, an LV wire 
relay on the bottom of the ground here. And the reason for that is that tall grass will not affect it. If I put the connector here, so the tall grass or anything else can't grow here. So if there's any pollution, it's not going to knock this cable off. So we just connect this up now. And that will connect to this lantern up here, which is great. So there's obviously no grass going to grow around here, so these are not going to get knocked off. The, I don't, and snow won't land on there anyway, so they shouldn't get knocked off with those. Snow seems a bit strange uh, sometimes. If it's a Minecraft flower like a poppy or whatever, it or a dandelion, it doesn't set. It doesn't sit down. You don't get any snow on those. But other things like stones uh, and machines actually get snow on top of them. Right. So where are we? Let's do these ones. 25 and 25. Actually, let's just increase this to one second. If I click the one, the, the one on the left-hand side, it increases the rate here. So now we need to produce... Um, I don't need a... I do not need on this pump uh, any power because it's coming from here. But this has now got the power ends we need. So we need to put in here some sort of phosphor. And shift... Should be able to, no, I can't shift right click. Let's have to do it like that. And we need some sand and that'll start to make lava. I've got some sand in here, I think. Yep, I have, good. Just having a quick look if I need anything else from in there while I'm here. Nope. Not at the moment. So let's put these two sands in here, and that's going to start producing lava. Now, it's not going to go out of here yet, because we haven't got a lever on this pump. So I'm just hoping if I put a lever down on this face, it's not going to light up anything else it might do actually I've got to be careful so let's just yeah it's not lighting up anything else I don't see it. this one should be lit up because this has now got lava in it and this thing is now running as you can see it's on so that basically means that these two things are turned on and we should be getting in here lava and water to make obsidian as you can see like that the obsidian sitting at the top that doesn't matter too much and that's going to keep coming in it's not going to produce any pollution because ah, it's just done it now it's because this tank hasn't got any lava in it uh, and it's only the burning of the fuels which produce pollution it's not the process the process normally would be quite heavily polluted making obsidian you're putting water on it and it gets out so now we need to get it out so what i'm doing here is i'm going to put down a hopper i've got a hopper here and the hopper is just there so i can capture the stuff really it's not it's not serving any it's just a way to get the stuff out uh, i'll try again like that and that's now pointing into this block so i can replace that block with hopper ducks or a chest or whatever i want to and then on top of this we're going to put a casting basin like that and then we just need out of here a faucet so i've got two faucets and i'll just right click this now and this will get drawn out of here as you can see oops i could put it on there we'll do that for the time being and you see that this has now got six blocks in here and we should have now have one block in the hopper that's why the you can reach this just from this trap door. that's why i put a trap door so we can just get at this for the time being like that now we can automate the rest of this so let's have a look at this again is it still going up no it's not going up anymore because i didn't turn on the pump for the water so let's turn on the pump you see this is now full and will remain full let's turn this on now I'll have a quick sleep i'll see you in a second so now these two tanks are full this should be giving output which is because it is because these two tanks are full and those that output is going to get slowly fed through using this into these drains and filling up this with obsidian. So we're getting plenty of obsidian here now, as you can see, 16 buckets. So the only thing to do is to, next is to put down a redstone timer. I'm using a redstone timer, don't have to, of course. I can use red, automated redstone to do the same thing. And if I put it down here like this, it'll automatically send pulses. Uh, and it sends a pulse every two seconds, which is probably fine. I can speed that up by reducing it down here. That should, it doesn't actually update as as it should do. That's now 1.5 seconds. Another click, and it should be one second. There you go. 
that's one second so it's doing a pulse every one second now if you want to turn that off you just use a lever on this face here and then right click it, and that then turns it off so there's not going to come out once this one's disappeared it will not send a pulse to turn that on again so there's no more coming in here so let's just turn it back on again and send let the next pulse go through as you can see and it's just producing obsidian and look at the smeltery controller here see it's actually one bucket of water and 48 oh, lava so it's not got enough space to put the rest of the lava in at the moment so what we can then do is just increase the time on these ones so at the moment it's 1.25 seconds let's make it 1.5 seconds because really the what's the limiting factor is going out isn't it now So what I'm hoping is that this will actually be fast enough to maintain a little bit of space here. One bucket and 73, and it keeps producing more. As long as that, yeah, that's going up to two buckets. So what I've got to do now is to reduce the speed of this. So what I'm going to do is just stop the water. No, I'm not. I'm going to just increase the size of this a little bit more. I've got plenty more seed bricks. Let's do that. Let's put this third bricks down like this. And reach those without falling in. Oops. Uh -huh. I've run out of bricks. One brick too short. I'm probably got another one in here, that's why I'm not sure why I haven't got it in. Yep. One said brick to <laughs> for some reason I didn't pick up that one. Oh. Let's put that down here like this. So then the smeltery gets a, a larger capacity. And what I do with this next is I just cover it up. So let's just cover it up. I put one um seared brick slab down here like this. And then come across that like that. Then we can pick this one up. And then just cover it up completely, make it safe, make sure that nothing fall is going to fall into it. And then that's that job done. But there's one more thing to do, and that's to cover up these two blocks of water. Uh, what I can use a lever for, let's take this lever off here, put this lever back onto this side here like that, and turn it on. And then over this side we're going to put a slab. Um, I think that's probably the best thing to do. Then they are at least consistent. We can see that those are going through. I'll just go and get some slabs and come back in a second. And of course the reason I'm doing that is so the water doesn't freeze. So that's it. So there should be no, nothing else now. It should just carry on pro making obsidian while we've got our lava and uh, materials in here. As you can see, it's yes, it was got a little less of tanks full, which of course it is, because it's not coming in that fast. Is producing it and hopefully over time let's have a look at this now two buckets of water and a little bit less so we've got one extra bucket of water not a big deal I can fix that and initially you probably will get that case we just take a bucket of lava out of here come along here and right click that and that'll fix that for us for the time being if you need to repair it so now I've got basically one bucket of that and 93 Milli buckets of lava in here. So if it gets full, it's a problem. So we're 27 blocks. I'm going to have to leave this for a time and see how it carries on. Um, if, the, if at the worst case it's the worst, I'll just increase this by another little bit to make it two seconds. And the same with this one. Reduce the speed. Now, the other thing I can do, of course, is to set up another another casting basin and put it down here uh, with another faucet and that'll then double up the output of this uh, how much are we doing now got 28 blocks of obsidian well that's it for this episode i hope you've enjoyed it it's been fun doing this one i can tell you it's taken me a, a few goes to get this right i had a few misfires i was thinking oh well i can just run things when the tanks are full and I set up a system to do that. I haven't shown you the redstone automated bit for this but it's very straightforward. It's just two inputs, one output and one AND gate. Um, and that's it. So until next time I think we're going to have to do some more immersive tech stuff because it's got a load of generators. 
Uh, and the diesel gener the diesel engine is really quite a beast and does have a lot of requirements. So I'll see what we've done that already. So the diesel gen the other ones like the solar panels and whatever from Moses Tech, I'll have a look at. So until next time, bye for now.